Hello, everybody. Good evening. I want to thank Leanne. I got my Awake magazine, my collector's edition, yeah. so thank you very much. Well, in fact, I was looking at this front cover, and my goodness, is this thing full of subliminal faces. It, it's scary, actually. Well, I think this constellation right here is the Pleiades. Well, Wasn't that be. Russell's favorite, you know, Could the be. throne of God Could be. thing? So, thanks for sending that. I wanted to do something real quick from the uh, little booklet working together safely when you're part of the um, or, well it's not the RBC anymore but whatever it is now you end up with this little little booklet and I want to draw your attention to a comment on page 11 under the subheading work habits and conduct oh no you can see there's one there's several little several little dots right there rules one of them is Horseplay and practical jokes are not allowed. How is going from side to side with an excavator while they're making a Happy at Bethel video not considered horseplay? I wonder if OSHA would be interested in that. I'm sure. And it says, volunteers who willfully disregard safety standards will not be allowed to remain on the project. I wonder if that guy is on the project running the excavator any longer. Well, they were even dancing on tractors and stuff. I know it. So, to, to quote J.W. Fairy Tale, but that's different. <laughs> of course, yeah. it's always different. Exactly. Wow. So, so, what's the topic of this one, Kim? Well, first of all, we have a new informant, and we want to thank the source. And uh, he has sent a bunch of files. And um, So, what, what's his name? The source. I know he's a source, but what's his name? Well, that's the name he's chosen, the source. The, the, the new informant is named The Source. The Source. Cool. <laughs> you know, I, I thought, you know, I thought, you know, when you said we have a new source, it would be like, you know, this is The Source. <laughs> but apparently not. No. <laughs> okay. Like. Hello, you're, Source. <laughs> you're thinking The Source, Deep Throat, or yeah. The Source, Unknown <laughs> yeah. Apostate. But this or, is The Source. So when we have something that comes from the source, we have to say, this is from the source. Yes. Okay, clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. appreciate you sending the files, because this was interesting. Yeah. Um, because, and I'm sure some will say, yes, we know there's still NGO members in Europe. Old news, you know. Well, what, what this is basically based upon is that in the uh, country of Korea, is it South Korea? I believe so. Yeah, one yeah, of those. Yeah, South Korea. South Korea. Um, young men, Jehovah's Witnesses, are being thrown in Korean, South Korean jails because they're conscientious objectors. We know all about that, don't yes. we? Yes. And so um, it seems like Watchtower is making some petitions to a branch of the United Nations to beg... For these brothers' release. Yeah, and as soon as I pull up the letter here, I had it right in front of me. Now, this is the Center for Civil and Political Rights, which is a branch of the UN. And the letter that Watchtower wrote is addressed <laughs> to the submission to the UN Human Rights Committee. <laughs> submission to the UN Human Rights Committee. Yes. Keep that thought in mind, friends. Yes. And it's interesting because the letterhead at the top is the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. Now, I'm going to put the link to this uh, CCPR um, website down here below in the description so that you can see the files. And they're listed here four times. Four times. Under the NGO's latest reports. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but in order to file one of these reports, you have to be an NGO member, right? Yep. Yeah. So, 
and they are filing under European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. And they've got three attachments here, and all of these are grievances against the Republic of Korea for their uh, putting over 500 young Korean brothers in prison. In fact, I think Watchtower has even manufactured a brochure uh, yes. in this regard. But I know that um, one of our sources, Deep Throat, <laughs> Um, has been reading through some of the stuff that we've sent him to kind of, you know, help us out with this. Thank you, sweetie. And he has got some comments um, that he emailed back to us. Um, so why don't you read yeah. those comments? So right in the letter that Watchtower has on the front of these documents uh, where it says submission to the UN Human Rights Committee, he makes the comment, I see the Watchtower is still depending on the UN while at the same time condemning it as Satan's prime tool against Jehovah's kingdom. Pick a side, Watchtower. If you're going to continue to condemn the UN, then quit using it for your own selfish purposes. Sounds just almost what so, you said. Well, hey, no, they, they, they haven't heard what I have to say yet. <laughs> That's coming later. <laughs> but I mean, it sounds just like... Oh, yeah. It's, well, that's the thing. You know, I think Deep Throat yeah. and I were pretty much on the same page when it comes to this Watchtower nonsense. It's probably why we're such close friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I think this was in the brochure. Now the brochure... Well, either that or the or the uh, letter that Watchtower is sending yeah, it was to in the, the CPR. Right. Yeah, uh, but like I said, you can go to the website and you can click on each one of the attachments and see all the brochure and everything. And I believe the brochure is still available on JW.org also. <coughs> but they've got the newer one. Okay. So it says, Jehovah's Witnesses are known in South Korea and worldwide as peaceful, law-abiding citizens. Except when it comes to reporting pedophiles to the local authorities. They're not law-abiding in that regard. Willing to serve their community. And his comment is, how exactly do JW serve their community? Watchtower says this is done by the ministry, but this doesn't serve the community at all. It does, however, serve Watchtower. Yep, that's true. Huh. And there's point five on the request, right? Yeah, yeah, this was in the documents. The government of South Korea has no legislative provision for alternative civilian service. Conscientious objectors cannot decline military training or choose alternative civilian service. Young, witnesses, young witness men suffer imprisonment rather than violate their Bible-trained conscience and personally held religious convictions. His comment, someone should inform the UN in South Korea that in recent history, Watchtower made sure its own young men needlessly went to prison despite the fact that the government did have alternative services available. Watchtower refused alternative service even when the government bent over backwards to accommodate <coughs> JWs. So Watchtower is hardly in a position to condemn South Korea now for ha not having alternative service options. I'm sure whatever Korea would offer as alternative service options, Watchtower would find a way to refuse it, then claim religious persecution, and young JW men would still go to prison. Watch, Watchtower must have its martyrs one way or the yeah. other. You know, just like in Malawi, they didn't give those brothers a chance. Either. No, no, they, they did not, did they? Yeah, it was what Watchtower dictated. Yeah. So thank you for your comments. It, um, it's interesting in this line here that Jehovah, that Watchtower uses this line that young witness men suffer imprisonment rather than violate their Bible trained consciences and personally held religious convictions. Um, I don't think it's their own, I think it's Watchtower well, it's dictates. what Watchtower mandates um, because the thing is, is that, you know, when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I was encouraged to read my Bible daily. Not weekly, not monthly, not semi-monthly, not even annually, but daily. Guess and it what? Was we drilled. did. <laughs> it was drilled into our heads. So I have a hard time feeling any sympathy for these Jehovah's Witnesses that have gone to prison when Watchtower says they're going there because of their Bible-trained consciences. 
Jehovah's Witnesses, especially these JWs in prison, I have to ask, when you read your Bible daily, did you not read Acts chapter 10? Did you not understand the conversion of Cornelius? Let me read something to you. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Now, in uh, uh, Caesarea, there was a certain man named Cornelius, an army officer of the Italian band, as it was called, a devout man, and one fearing God together with all his household. And he made many gifts of mercy to the people and made supplication to God continually. Now, a couple of our other translations, Cornelius is referred to as... As a centurion or captain. Or captain. Which means he was a higher up. Right. Now, no doubt, as a captain in the Roman army, the Italian band, no doubt he had the authority to send men to their deaths. And yet God favorably heard his prayers. In fact, so favorably, favorably did God hear his prayers. Verses 3 and 4 show a conversation between an angel of God. And this is what the angel of God said. Your prayers and gifts of mercy have ascended as a remembrance before God. If it was so wrong for a Jehovah Witness to be in the army, then why did God send an angel to communicate with a man who was in the Roman army back in those days? Either, either God is greatly confused as to what time period that he's dealing with when it comes to dealing with humans. Because see, back then, God had no problem communicating with an army officer, blessing him. Or Watchtower is confused. Or Watchtower does not know what the scriptures truly say. And that's why I can't feel any sympathy for these JWs, because if they read their Bible and pondered on what's actually taking place here, their conscience might allow them to serve a short stint in the military. Okay? But let's go on just a little bit further here. Um, let's go over... To, now, in the way this story plays out in the book of Acts, the army officer, Cornelius, sends some of his attendants to go find Peter. They find Peter. Peter comes back to the family and is gathered probably in a, in, in a home somewhere where others have been gathered also. And Peter is... Ex, um, Preaching to them. Verse 44. While Peter was yet speaking about these matters, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those hearing the word. That would also include the army officer Cornelius, because he's the one that orchestrated for Peter to speak in front of them. So again, did you not read this account in the Bible? Watchtower says, Young witness men suffer imprisonment rather than violate their Bible-trained conscience. Do you understand the point that I'm getting at, Jehovah's Witnesses? Your Bible-trained conscience would allow you to decide for yourself whether military service is an option for you or not. When you allow Watchtower to dictate to you what your conscience is supposed to be, I'm going to prison instead of doing a stint in the military. You have surrendered your conscience to them. You are no longer in control of yourself because this account and Acts plainly, plainly states that Cornelius was speaking face to face with an angel. So apparently God didn't have a problem 
with Cornelius being in the army, and Holy Spirit also fell upon him while he was still serving in the military. Well, I've got to remember, too, that look at the whole Mexico and Malawi thing. The Watchtower, you know, they yeah. allowed the Mexican brothers to, to bribe the officials. To bribe the officials to get this little card that signed. They said they did do their military yeah, stint. Yeah, that actually, see, and, and here's the thing. At that point in time, if Mexico had gone to war, them Jehovah's Witnesses would have had to gone to war because they had their cards filled out <laughs> stating that they were in the military, the Mexican army. But you know, there's even a bigger problem here, Kimmy. Do you know what that is? Are you going to go all eh, there? I, I might, I might. Oh, what's that, Mikey? Well, <laughs> Revelation, it's grand climax at hand. Oh, I remember that book. How many times did we study this? Four, three, four times? It felt times? like about 40. Yeah, it felt like an eternity. <laughs> yeah. in, in fact, this has been studied so much that I hear that Watchtowers had to update it, update it too. Remember Mark and Corey did a little video with Tippix, a little bit of whiteout. We have to change a few things, brothers. Yeah, I think we've got a book from each time we studied it <laughs> yeah. with the different, you know, comments and yes. notes in it. But this, this whole making a plea to the United Nations, or a branch of the United Nations, really, really should get a Jehovah Witness to think. think. Look at the picture on page 226. That's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at this picture right here. I'm going to read the caption. The caption says, the fifth bowl exposes the throne, the throne of the wild beast as being the authority Satan has um, has given to the wild beast. So this wild beast has got its authority from Satan. To further draw that conclusion, here's another illustration. I believe that's the UN building in New York. Yeah, on page 247. And it says, as prophesied about the scarlet-colored wild beast, the League of Nations was abyssed during World War II, but was revived as the United Nations. The wild beast gets its authority from Satan. So why would they go to wild beast then? Well, honestly... Jehovah's Witnesses, if your God Jehovah is so mighty and so powerful, in fact, let's just point out a few things. See, Jehovah has the ability to organize 8 million people around the world to get his preaching work accomplished. Yeah. See, you've got to be a mighty God to be able to do that. In fact, Jehovah is so powerful that every year he can organize all of these conventions to where millions of Jehovah's Witnesses can again be gathered. He is so powerful that he even released Rutherford and those other six men from prison back in 1916, was it? 18, 19. 19, remember? Remember hearing that, Jehovah's Witnesses? See, that was Jehovah's hand that released them from prison back in the early days. Why can't he do that now? Why do you have to go and make pleas to Satan's organization? And really, isn't that counterproductive from Satan's perspective if he lets these men out just so they could go out and continue to preach against him? Against Satan? That does, that that's that's kind of pr productive. Well, I just had from a Satan's thought. perspective. Did no. it hurt? Yeah, almost. Did it hurt? <laughs> well, I mean, since they always say this that Jehovah blessed them and helped them, okay? So did Je Jehovah help liberate them from the concentration camps in the mid forties? No, it was the military. It was the military, <laughs> exactly. The military that was being somewhat guided by the United Nations or the League of Nations, whatever you prefer to call it at that time. But the the thing is, is Jehovah's Witnesses, please explain this to me. 
You believe in your doctrine that the kingdom was established in 1914. You had talks during the 2014 district convention showing what this kingdom has accomplished in the past 100 years. And you claim you're Jehovah's organization, and now you're going before Satan's throne of the wild beast. Begging for them to do something in your behalf. Doesn't make sense. Shouldn't you be... Well, wait a minute. Here, in, in the same Revelation book, same chapter... Oh, I lost my page. I'll get it in. Same, same chapter... You closed your book. I you? did. They, they've got this other picture, which goes back to 1986. 1986 was declared the year of international peace and security. And Watchtower mocks these religious leaders. In support of the UN's year of peace, representatives of the world's religions offered up a babel of prayers at um, Assisi, Italy. But not one of them prayed to the living God, Jehovah. How do you know? Did you hear every single one? Yeah, were you there to hear those prayers? Well, I know they were there, but did well, they hear? But here's, but here's the thing. <laughs> Why aren't you praying to Jehovah to release these men? Why are you sending petitions to Satan's organization to release these men? You're hypocrites. You're, hip you're doing exactly what the nation of Israel did centuries ago. They aligned themselves with the kings of the world for protection. And you're doing the same very thing right now. Doesn't sound like they're relying on Jehovah no. to help them. It sounds like they're relying on their lawyers. Yeah, so exactly. I want some Jehovah Witness to please explain to me why would Satan's organization even contemplate releasing these men just so that they could return to the preaching work which further condemns them? Come on. From Satan's perspective, it's counterproductive. He wants the preaching work stopped. Jehovah's Witnesses try to figure that one out. Do I have time to mention this Watchtower article that I found? Oh, you may have. Okay. This is from the 1969 Watchtower, January 15th. Pages 37, 38, and the name of the article is Why Has God Permitted Wickedness Until Our Day? And it kind of goes along with our discussion here, talking about Satan's organization. Okay, now there's no num numbers on the paragraphs, but under the subheading, What Have the Results Shown? The first paragraph under that <laughs> sub subheading, it says, The Bible shows that Satan has made use of the time to build up an organization in heaven <laughs> and earth over which he rules. In heaven? Satan's building an organization in heaven? And earth over which he rules. So, I mean, is this a Freudian slip? Well, actually, that, that, that contradicts the whole, uh, the whole thing of Satan being ousted in heaven in 1914. Yeah. Because this was printed in 1969. Well, also, too, witnesses, do you understand what this is saying, over which he rules? So if he has an organization in heaven and on earth over which he rules, that means he's in heaven also with With ruling. an organization ruling in heaven. I can't see God and Christ allowing that. No, Well, no. That, that's just, <laughs> it just goes to show how how stupid these writers are at Watchtower. I couldn't believe it when I yeah. seen that. It's like, are you kidding me? So, yeah. I, you know, I don't even know what to say about that. That's Your just, God Jehovah allows Satan to, you know, have a heavenly organization too? That, no. No, 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 no. No. It's just foolishness on Watchtower's part. Yes. So anyhow, Jehovah's Witnesses... When Watchtower says that you have a Bible-trained conscience, why aren't you exercising that Bible-trained conscience based upon what you're reading in the Scriptures? It's plain as the nose on my face that Cornelius was baptized with Holy Spirit while he was still serving in the military, and nowhere, nowhere 
did these scriptures say that Cornelius had to come out of the military first before being baptized with Holy Spirit or even being spoken to by an angel? Or he had to wait till after his military stint, you know, yeah. before he could become baptized. Well, you know what? This this is why I got in so much trouble with elders because I was reading the Bible and things like this were beginning to connect dots. Here, this was a big dot for me. Um, Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead by the Holy Spirit. They didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to one another. They lied. And the Holy Spirit struck them dead. And this was a big problem that I had because I witnessed firsthand elders lying. Now, elders are supposed to be appointed by Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that struck Ananias and Sapphira down. Why doesn't the Holy Spirit strike these elders down today when they lie? Because 99.9% .9 of them would be gone. <laughs> yeah. You know, th th there's a joke in there somewhere. But do you get what I'm not I'm... making a joke. That's the truth. <laughs> but that I know. But do you understand what I'm saying, Jehovah's Witnesses? Read your Bibles. Start thinking about what's taking place in the Scriptures, and then compare it to what's taking place in your congregations. When you get an elder that lies, if that Holy Spirit doesn't strike him dead, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. These men are not appointed by Holy Spirit because if they were. The Holy Spirit would be forced to strike them down like he did Ananias and Sapphira. It's as simple as that, Jehovah's Witnesses. Simple as that. Yes. So. Thanks you, for watching. And you got through it without any m and Yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching, and welcome to our yep. new subscribers. Yeah. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to visit us at watchtower.exposed. And we'll be happy to, um, that's that's the easiest way to get a hold of us at this point. Yes, because YouTube is really glitchy right now, and I just can't Well, there's can't just get so many comments and everything else also. So. Yeah, but you click on it to go get your messages, and for some reason it's coming up null and void page for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. So you all have a great evening, and we will see you next time. Bye. the Italian army. Well, he was even high up one, like a captain, or I think they call him a centurion too, right? Uh, centurion, wasn't that a term from Battlestar Galactica? No, those were Centur Cylons. Cylons, centurion Cylons, weren't they? Uh-huh. Something like that. Are they the same, or are they different? <laughs> Getting sidetracked anyhow, here. Anyhow, <laughs> a Gentile Roman army officer. When you read that account, Jehovah's Witnesses, you will see that an angel appeared to Cornelius when he was still serving in the military. He was a centurion even, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he was... Which he, is kind of like he a was, great fortune. Yeah, he was a, well, he was a high-ranking. Um, it, the, the, the Acts, the, the account here in Acts says that he... What, um, you know, you would have to do that to me, wouldn't you? <laughs> um. We want to thank the source. Yes, a new source uh, for sending this information. <laughs> because um, this is interesting, you know. I so, are you, so what is the source that we're thanking? The source. The source. It's just the source. You know, like the nickname Deep Throat or Unknown so Prostate this is the source. or Atlantis. Oh, this is cool. the source. The source. Okay. <laughs> you know, I thought it was going to be like we want to thank the source and give somebody's name. Or, you know, this is just the source. That is his name. All right. It's clear. Clear as mud. <laughs> Poor Michael.